Um, I think we've been here before. Please? Yeah. Remember that day we went to the beach? With Gem and Ellie? I think we came here for dinner afterwards. It feels very familiar. This is Josh and I'm Erin. We recently started documenting our travels around the world, hoping it will inform, inspire and entertain. Subscribe to join the adventure. Hey guys, welcome back to Corsica. If you're new here, then welcome aboard. We spent the past three months sailing the med with my parents aboard Linnea, their 44 foot sailing boat. Subscribe, join the adventure and hit this link to go catch up on the past few weeks. You join us this week as we arrive in the small town of saint Florent, where Josh and I are having a bit of deja vu. I need a black and white striped top and a berry. <laughs> and a string of onions. No, a string of garlic. <laughs> string of garlic, yeah. Bonjour, nous nous cherchons pour le wifi. Nous avons le café, un petit pain. Oh là là là, ça serait bleu. So today we are working on the uh, the front of the, the, the water and uh, yeah, we look at the, battle, uh, the boat, it's beautiful. Uh, Josh reckons he sounds so sexy with the French accent so he's just going to start speaking in English. Especially when I say the name of this boat, the Deep Frodus. <laughs> oh, it's so beautiful. White pearl. Oh, c'est bon, hein? I, uh, I love to talk in French accent. Now I'm talking English, uh, but uh, <laughs> can't show him up. Yeah, we we have been here before. We've definitely eaten here. We ate in that restaurant. I remember. Lovely. Yeah. So a couple of years ago, when we were working here, we had a day off and we drove up the coast and went to a beach. And then on the way home, we were starving and just stopped in this random little town. And actually, I don't think at the time we had any idea where we were. But yeah, we had dinner at this restaurant. How weird. It's funny coming somewhere where you're like, oh, it's quite you, and then suddenly you walk into town and you realise you've actually been here before. Everyone's just been released from church and the whole of Corsica is now out for a day trip in their boat. It's, it's so busy and no one really holds back on the speed so you're just getting washed constantly. It feels more like an, an evacuation. We look at all the boats speeding in front of us and the boats coming up behind us. Everyone is leaving this marina in a rush it seems. Well if it is a race I think we're losing. Behind us, that is the first cruise ship we've seen in the Med this season. Cruising must be back on. I don't know if you can see it on the camera, but where all the boats, all the motorboats have headed, they've just passed us. 
there's like a black kind of cloud of diesel fumes. Ugh. We're heading right for it. We are heading to Ile Russe, which is um, how many miles? It's 19.2 miles. 19.2. Not yet. About 9.9 knots, I'd say, yeah. <laughs> Sorry about that. Oh look, oh, we're at 9.5 now. flying a lot. With the wind on our side for once, we were feeling pretty smug that we were keeping up with the catamaran on our port side. But things soon took an unnerving turn. We suddenly got hit with a big squall, and with the Jenica full of wind at the front, we were quickly becoming overpowered. We needed to get that sail down ASAP. Before the Jenica ripped, or worse happened, we capsized. But with 20 knots of wind hitting the boat, that is much easier said than done. When there's too much when there's too much power in the sail in the Jenica, the boat turns itself into the wind, which usually would depower your sails, but when you've got the Jenica up it actually enhances the speed so you essentially get twice as much wind into your sail. So it completely overpowers it and that's what the boat was doing. It went, I was actually a little bit scared. Like it was exciting but I was a bit scared. But I was closest to the wheel, so I was putting all my weight trying to turn us back to port and I couldn't turn the wheel at all. My heart was going so fast. I was like, oh, come on. 
I'm really scared. Yeah, because I was searing. It was still really hot. Oh, yeah, you Oh, yeah, it was well, all on your shoulders. Yeah, you basically, if I hadn't have steered the boat properly, we would have capsized. The leak, so. Yeah, we were we were heeled over a lot. I was I was standing on the side of the boat rather than on the floor. Yeah, we reached nine point seven knots, which for this boat is specking fast. It's small, huh? Do you enjoy that, Dad? That's good fun, that. Nine point seven on top of the boat. Currently, right now, it looks pretty bad. That is some, uh, that's some serious bold that we've got going on there. on the beach. Balls on the beach with a beer. showing off now. Well, this really isn't something you get to see every day. With boats, jet skis, and a lot of hills to negotiate, they made this look so easy. A pilot friend had told us before how unbelievably hard flying one is. You have to land on the water at high speed, not too fast so that you overshoot, but also not too slow that you lose momentum. Hold the plane steady and straight as you pick up as much as 12,000 litres of water in less than 10 seconds, and then take off again with said water. Not as easy as it looks, but thanks for the show, guys. In a couple of days, we're setting sail for mainland France, so we'll hold things there until then. What starts off as a pretty uneventful crossing soon gets very exciting as we suddenly spot something in the water. You won't want to miss it. Thanks so much for watching, guys. Please subscribe, share with your friends, and leave us a comment below to let us know what you think. See you next time.